Hey everyone, welcome back. This is my review of Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works Episode 3. I'm sorry this review is coming out so late. I've had a lot of internet issues lately, so I haven't been able that combined with laziness, so I haven't been able to get this out. I know this came out this is 1 09 AM on Monday. So yeah, it's almost two days entirely since this episode actually came out. <laughs> And several hours since I watched it. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm ready to get it out now. And also hopefully catch up on my, on yesterday's reviews as well. But anyways, once again, a fantastic episode of Fate's Thing Night Unlimited Blade Works. I really wish I did a live reaction to this episode. And I really think that next week I'm going to do a live reaction. Because every single episode is live reaction worthy. But obviously I'm not going to do it. Like, reaction of every single goddamn episode, you know what I mean? But, <clears throat> but either way, though, the fucking fights are out of this world, man. Seriously, the main focus of this episode was Rin, Archer, and Saber basically teaming up to fight Berserker and Ilya. The reason I only say those three is because Shiro was basically acting like a little bitch. The entire goddamn episode. <laughs> Seriously, I really hope that he steps it up soon, because this is kind of pathetic, okay? I mean, granted, I think it's better than what he did in Studio Dean's adaptation of The Fate Route, in which, he liter in which it literally seemed like he sh was trying to get himself killed every five seconds, which is another thing. I'm surprised that Shiro did not try to stop Saber from fighting. I have to give him props for that because yeah maybe he actually realizes that he can't do a damn thing by himself against any servant let alone someone as uh, fucking overpowered as berserker and I know why berserker is overpowered but I'm not going to spoil that for you though okay now in this episode Ilya seems to be really interested in in a Shiro for whatever reason. Uh, well, she she says she's interested in Archer mainly because of his power, but she's interested in uh, Shiro for whatever reason. And I think I, <clears throat> I think I know why. If you watch Fate Zero, then you know that they're technically step siblings. Okay, uh, Shiro is the adopted son of Kiritsugu, and Ilya was the real daughter of Kiritsugu. Uh, whether she knows that or not, though, I don't know because when Studio Dean adapted the Fate route. She didn't. I don't, she didn't really seem to know that. I don't think. I don't know if she found out about it later on, but at least right away she didn't really seem to know that. So I don't know if she knows that right away now, or not. Okay, but that's that's really the only thing I could actually think of as to why she would be interested in uh, Shiro, because I wouldn't think that the Heinsburn family, as dickish as they are, would have actually told her about her family and what, or, or about, uh, yeah, about her family and whatnot, or at least about Shiro, because she probably still remembers who her father was, but at least about Shiro, you know what I mean, so, yeah, I guess that's worth st stating as well, so, but overall, I thought it was a great episode, other than that, there was the episode, there was the scene with, uh, Kire and Gilgamesh, basically, okay, and I know, I'm, and before you say, oh, that's a spoiler, it's not a fucking spoiler. It's kind of obvious that was Gilgamesh there. It's the second scene that we've had with him in this series so far, okay? <laughs> now, I'm not going to spoil exactly how he's still on in this plane of existence, okay? Because that hasn't been revealed yet in this series. But it's kind of obvious that's Gilgamesh. And I really like that conversation that Gilgamesh and Kirei have with each other, okay? <laughs> because... I really love the fact that Kirei, Kirei's ideology really clashes with both, with both uh, Kiritsugu's and Shiro's, because Kiritsugu's ideology in a nutshell is basically that most people, if not all people, could possibly be saved, and Shiro's ideology is everyone should be saved okay while Kirei seems to really conflict seems seems to really conflict that 
and he doesn't really seem to care who he kills in order to get what he wants because when you really think about it believing in God and wanting destruction de depending on how you rationalize it can be two ha can be two sides of the same coin okay and the way the way Kirei rationalizes it is fucked up and awesome at the same time, seriously, so yeah, it's obvious that he's it's obvious that he's gonna play a major villainous role later on. Like, if that if that wasn't the the most obvious case of foreshadowing ever, I don't know what was. Okay. Seriously, but other than that though, there's not really anything else in the episode in the episode that's worth noting, I don't think. Uh, except, you know what, I guess I should state this. I really think Ilya's field kind of fucked up, because in order to control a Berserker-class servant, which is already fucked up, you probably have to be a little fucked up as well. And yes, I'm in in including, uh, what's his name? I'm including Karya from Fate Zero. As much as I love Karya's character, and I really felt sorry for him, he, he was kind of fucked up, okay? He had to have been in order to control Berserker, I'm guessing. Also, Ilya's field, despite her age, has a frightening amount of mana, which is weird because I don't think her mother had a lot. Uh, and I don't think her father had a lot either, so it's kind of weird that she would ha inherently, at such a young age, have so much mana. Like, I think the whole reason for uh, her mother's death in the first place was the fact that she didn't have enough mana to live due to her being basically a creation and her father I don't think was ever really a, a mage with a huge amount of mana to begin with okay but either way though if you've yet to see this week's episode even though I think pretty sure most people have seen it by now I definitely recommend that you do the animation was fucking amazing as always damn near perfect as always and I just really love this episode of Fate Stay Night. Sorry it took me so long to get this review out. I'm really hoping that some of my other reviews I can get out soon as well. So anyways, overall, hope you enjoyed this review, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.